Good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope you'll find this interesting. I, I've only got five slides, uh, four from me and one from Oded. I think we'll hopefully spend most of the time on Oded's slides, so I'll go through mine quickly. And as Matt indicated, I'm a real sense sales manager for Intel. I'm based in Austin, Texas, and um, robotics actually is my primary market focus. So, um, and I, I, I think I've been working with the Ross Industrial team for probably four years now, so quite a while. So I'll jump into it. Um, so this is my only kind of marketing slide. Um, I wasn't sure, you know, the audience's uh, experience with RealSense. So I just want to quickly give an intro. So RealSense is a brand name for a um, family of depth cameras from Intel. It's actually been around for quite a while, about 12 years. And um, I think we need to update this number, but we've shipped a lot of units, at least 3 million. I'm, I'm sure it's more than that um, by now. And uh, the two key value props, I think, behind our products and why they're, they've been popular in uh, robotics applications are that uh, unlike a lot of stereo camera solutions where they perform the disparity calculation in software on a discrete GPU or CPU, which consumes a lot of power and uh, eats up a lot of CPU cycles, um, because we're a semiconductor company, we, we developed a custom dedicated ASIC to perform that function. And it can um, produce HD resolution at 30 frames per second in a 600 milliwatt envelope at a, at a very low cost. So that's a key differentiator for us. And then the other key thing, which Oded will talk about is our, our SDK. You know, we offer an open source cross-platform SDK that's um, been very successful and, and gives people the ability to to modify um, things that they like or don't like and then prove it. And um, we, we provide a variety of wrappers for um, uh, other um, higher level uh, applications and languages, including, you know, ROS1 and ROS2 support. And, uh, and we've got a variety of third party um, ISV partners that uh, have also built applications that leverage our SDK. Uh, and then for people in the audience who are actually designing robots, I don't know if there's anybody out there, uh, we have two primary paths to market. Um, on the left side, we've got the complete camera in the enclosure. Uh, these can, you can get started in five minutes with this. You plug in a USB cable, plug it into your PC or your, your system and uh, run our RealSense viewer application and you get depth maps uh, immediately. Um, so these are great for uh, evaluations and relatively low volume applications for people who just don't want to have to fuss with the industrial design of uh, incorporating vision into their solution. Uh, but for those who, who do want to blend the camera into their design, perhaps hide it from the end user. In particular, I'm thinking some cobot designs like Canova in the market, they, they want to make it look sleek and integrated. Uh, we do sell the components of the camera as well. And these are standard products uh, that people can purchase from the market. So you can buy the, the little PCB board that has the depth processor on it and then the optical uh, module and uh, blend that into your industrial design however you'd like. And then there's a side benefit in that, in that it's a, a lower cost uh, approach to market. Okay. Um, so many of you, um, probably heard some rumors or saw some articles last year about, you know, Intel winding down real sense. And I just wanted to um, clarify what really happened there a bit, because uh, I get this question a lot. So um, there was some partial truth to, to some of those announcements or articles. Uh, we, our management team at the executive level decided to refocus real sense on the robotics market. Originally, real sense was kind of a general market computer vision solution that got used in a variety of um, applications, things like face authentication and measurement logistics and um, you know, heat map tracking for frictionless stores and uh, body scanning and all kinds of different things. And uh, the decision was made to focus specifically on robotics. So you'll see in our roadmap and new products and new product features going forward, that um, they're more robotic centric, I would say. Now we're still supporting customers in these other applications and still selling our cameras to these other applications, but um, our focus in, in terms of product development is um, 
is robotics industry. <clears throat> uh, and, as, and as part of that restructuring, we did end a life um, several product lines that either weren't focused on robotics or um, didn't have appropriate market traction uh, in, in the in the industry. So our, our LiDAR depth camera, our face authentication cameras, and our tracking cameras were all um, end of life. Um, and the last order is replaced in February of this year. Uh, we do have stock of some of these uh, still, so people who are using those can still purchase them, but we're no longer developing uh, new products in those categories. And so all of our, um, you'll see in the next slide, the roadmap that all of our products that we offer today and going forward are based on stereo technology and then their depth cameras specifically. Okay. Uh, before I go to the roadmap, any questions about that? Okay. So last slide for me, um, this is just a, a snapshot of a kind of a public facing roadmap. Um, we, we don't have NDA, so I can't really talk about um, in any great detail about the future products. But uh, this shows a variety of, <clears throat> the blue, the blue uh, rows here show the, the current D400 series cameras. Uh, and, and these are composed of a variety of uh, baselines and uh, sensor types and uh, lens fields of view, uh, including the module versions of these. And I'd say in the articulated arm space, the, the, the most popular camera in the past was always the D415 because it had really good accuracy and high pixel count um, <clears throat> at relatively long ranges. Um, some of our customers using that camera have now transitioned to the D455 camera which offers uh, approximately double the, the range, operating range. Um, but yeah, those are the two primary um, cameras in the articulated arm space historically. Now this year, we've already launched two new cameras. One is the D405, which is a short range camera. It's about the size of a golf ball and it could be integrated in like on the wrist of an arm or the module version could actually is small enough to embed in the palm of the gripper. And it can see objects as close as seven centimeters. And then we we launched the version of the D four thirty five, which is primarily used in AMR applications. But we launched a version of that with a a near infrared pass filter to reduce reflections from shiny surfaces and uh, handle the um, uh, stereo repetitive structure um, challenges that can create ghost images in your depth map. So those two are shipping in the market, uh, and we've got a new version of the D455 that we'll be launching at the, the Vision Stuttgart show in a couple of weeks. And uh, I'll be in Boston demonstrating this at that the, the Vision show in Boston. And then we've got some more derivatives of that plan for next year, and also from some more, um, actually, I think this is a typo, it should be D435 derivatives next year. And then towards the end of next year, we'll be launching the next generation family, which we'll call D500 series. And these will be based on a, a brand new chipset and have a, a lot of great capabilities that I'd be happy to talk about under NDA later. So that's, this is the last slide for me um, before I hand it off to Oded. Any questions about the products or roadmap? No? Okay, Oded. That's all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Oda Dubowski. Uh, I'm um, leading the software team in Realsys and now based in, uh, Israel, in the Israeli Development Center in Haifa, Israel. Um, what I wanted to share with you is just uh, this single slide, which uh, we're trying to capture the, most of the items related to Realsense and, and the activity that we've been doing uh, over the, uh, I think, um, last couple of years. Um, so uh, at the top, you, you can see the, the versions of Rust that, that we are supporting. You know, I was um, concentrating specifically on Rust 2 because that's the major activity that we've been doing in driving uh, recently. Uh, as you can see, and um, so let me start first, uh, as Brad mentioned, uh, related to LibreSense. So LibreSense is, is an open source SDK, and uh, essentially it's provided, you can grab that uh, through GitHub and uh, it provides you access and uh, essentially same access um, in an easy, easy format with all the different uh, capabilities related to post-processing uh, of the of the depth algorithms, uh, 
and enhancements that we're doing are related to sensors and filters. Some of them are also mentioned here at the bottom uh, um, that are, are capable of controlling all of our legacy um, cameras and also in the future uh, where we're enhancing and extending that towards our future cameras as well. Uh, we also providing the, the RAS2 router, uh, which is also available through the, um, there's a link over here. Uh, it's also available through this link and also in uh, part of the ROS repository. Uh, you can see the, in, in the timeline how we essentially developed that uh, throughout the different versions of LibreSense 2 and, um, and the different versions of uh, ROS2 and the wrappers that we have. Uh, the, the difference between, uh, let me focus for a second on ROS2 wrappers just, just to uh, clarify. The difference between the uh, major release three and four is essentially, we call it ROS2 beta because on uh, ROS, when we entered ROS2 with version number three, the major one, uh, we got some uh, few requests uh, from, from the community. For example, the um, some efficiency on the interprocess uh, communication, such as uh, reducing the copies, uh, so actually eliminating the copies you know, on interprocess communication uh, for us to or uh, having direct uh, capabilities for enabling or disabling sensors in runtime, so filters themselves through us, uh, and and therefore we. Created the beta, uh, the ROS2 beta, which was kind of the next generation ROS2 router, uh, and we call that. We changed the figure uh, to four. So everything you see in number four, uh, and essentially what we have uh, provided nowadays through this link, uh, is is now officially our development branch, and soon we'll be renaming that to our uh, ROS2 development. So that will become the, the major development development branch that we'll be continuing to develop. Um, so now for the for the Ross Humble specifically, so the what we we have coming just uh, coming soon by the end of this year, uh, we have the uh, support in Humble. Actually, uh, there's also already partial support in Humble. Um, Ross itself, you can download and compile uh, yourself. And then soon we have also the uh, the packaging. It's it's now processing, and you can just download that and use that. The only problem is that we haven't deployed the DKMS for the Ubuntu 22, which means that uh, it it now it now doesn't have really doesn't have the uh, the metadata uh, that is provided through the camera. But once we add the DKMS support, that's going to be included on the LibreSense 2, uh, the versions that will be releasing toward the end of the year. 2.53, uh, uh, we will have the DKMS support, which means that uh, with the camera we provide, we have full access to the metadata through ROS Humble. So just in short, um, what we currently have is uh, full access to the camera. You can stream anything, but you cannot get the metadata. And once, you have, once we have some, some customers reply that it's already usable for them. So we just left it as is. Uh, but by the end of the, by the end of the year, we, we also have the DKMS support, which will be adding the uh, metadata support for Ross Humble as well. Um, so I mentioned this for the second bullet over here for moving forward. Um, as, as Brad mentioned, our focus on is, is on AMR and all the features and enhancements that we'll be doing uh, will be also focused toward that direction. We, we also have some exciting news, uh, as Brad mentioned, uh, related to our future products that are related to ROS specifically, and, and we'd be happy to share, that, share them under NDA specifically for ROS. Uh, we're doing a lot in that field. And lastly, as I mentioned, uh, the, we, we are continuously developing and, and also uh, still following up on requests and, and pull requests from the ROS community, uh, such as those that I mentioned over here that are enabling direct access and direct enablement uh, on actually access to our camera through ROS uh, to perform all of these capabilities and more. Uh, there are also bug fixes that we follow up uh, regularly. So that's kind of a high level overview. Thank you very much.